if you do a lot of selections on your photos, you're going to love the latest update to Photoshop. It's the end of October in 2021. Adobe always does a big update to all of their products at Adobe Max. This year is no exception. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the new stuff for photographers inside of Photoshop. And I think you'll see a common theme, whether it's in the Photoshop interface or whether it's in Adobe Camera Raw, uh, the big theme is selections, getting you to edit parts of your photos faster, faster and more accurately without spending time trying to select those parts of your photos. You can now spend your time trying to make the edits to whatever parts of those photos you need to. Let's go ahead and dive right in. First up, we have the object selection tool, which is not new into Photoshop. It's located right over with the quick selection and magic wand tool, but the object selection tool has gotten a little bit of an update in that it will now auto detect objects in your photo. So you see a little refresh icon right up in the top uh, options bar there. Uh, if it's if it's circling, it usually means it's actually thinking and looking actually you know, searching through the photo. Once it's done, it means it's found objects and you can hover over things in your photo. You'll see them in blue and that means that they are selectionable. And if you want to make a selection, all you gotta do is click on it. It's gonna automatically put a selection around it. And after that, it's up to you. What do you wanna do with your selection? Typically, you know, as a photographer, we might go in here and add an adjustment layer where we make something a little bit brighter, something along those lines there. So uh, you got a selection, you can do anything with it at that point. And because I just added an adjustment layer and it's got a mask, I can always go over onto this mask layer and make some changes to it as well. Moving on from there, uh, don't forget there are a couple of little options up here that are worth exploring. Under the gear icon, you can see there's some preferences for that. And then the other one you'll wanna know is when you go in and you're, you know, it's, it's using and detecting in the photo, you can just press the letter N to see a preview of what objects it's detected and then let go of N and that preview will go away. It's just a shortcut to use that button right there, which will toggle uh, those previews on and off. All right, let's go ahead and get rid of that layer and sticking with more selection tools. And that really seems to be the theme with what uh, Adobe has done, not only inside of Photoshop, but also inside of Lightroom. So sticking with that selection theme, if you go under the layer menu, you will now see something that's called mask all objects. So what's gonna happen is, is it's gonna go look through for all of the objects and it's automatically gonna build masks for them over here in the layers panel, okay? And again, once you have a selection, then you can start to do something with it. So uh, you can look through over here and you can see each mask that it's built. Uh, you can always hold down your option or alt key and that will show you the mask and then you can hold down Option or Alt again, and that will uh, make the mask go away. And then at this point, if you wanna call up the selection for the mask, all you gotta do is hold down your Command key on Mac or Control key on PC and click on that mask and it'll load up a selection just like what we had done before. Uh, it'll load up that selection. And then from here, you can start doing things with the selection. Speaking of complex selections, Man, you are gonna have your mind blown toward the end of this video when I jump over into Adobe Camera Raw and I show you some of the masking enhancements. Uh, these enhancements have been carried over into Lightroom Classic as well. And I call this out because I think, I'll go on record as saying this is the biggest change I've ever seen to Lightroom Classic and Adobe Camera Raw. And it is the most complicated change I've ever seen to either one of those because I gotta be honest with you, I've, I, I used it for weeks and it really took me a while to, to figure out how everything works. And I put together a package, very affordable package that includes two hours of training that I wanna get you past that learning curve, okay? I know how to get you past that learning curve to make this the most powerful thing that you've seen. If you're editing your photos in Lightroom Classic or Adobe Camera Raw, this will change your editing. And I wanna help you get to that point where you, you really understand all the power that you have in there. Uh, it also includes my brush and gradient presets that have been updated to the latest versions of Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw as well. So normally those sell for the same price that the deep dive tutorial costs. So you're essentially getting two for one. Um, I do think it's worth your time, especially if you're using and shooting raw and using Lightroom Classic or Adobe Camera Raw, this will definitely speed up that process to learn. So I hope you'll swing by and check that out. Moving on to the next thing.
Uh, new feature thing number two, harmonization. So I'm gonna show you two different examples here. One's gonna be a little bit more creative in nature, and then I'll show you something a little bit more photographic. But I do a lot of texture blending, especially with wildlife photos that you know had a cluttered background and, and whatnot. You can see object uh, detection is actually working here. By the way, public service announcement, if you have the tool on, it's gonna work. So just go click off of the tool so that it doesn't continuously try to detect objects. But if I've got a cluttered background or I just want to be a little bit more artistic and you know creative and painterly with something, a lot of times I will do some masking and place it on top of a textured background. It just gives you a different type of a style than just pure photographic. Problem is, is matching the subject to the background can be very difficult. And there's ways around this. But one of the things that we can do, and you can see here, this is very saturated and very almost a magenta pinkish type of a color. So one of the new things that we can do is with a filter, uh, it's called harmonization. Now you have to, there's a catch. I can't do it on this layer with the mask. So what I have to do is press command or control J that will make a copy. I'll hide the original that way. I can at least keep it up in case I ever need to revert back to it. Then I'm going to right click on the layer that's visible with the mask choose apply layer mask and that'll essentially just apply it so now it's just the bird and transparency here we will head up to the filter menu go down to neural filters and this one is called harmonization so we go and turn it on and you might have to download it the first time you go in there and the way it works is is we chose the layer that needs to be fixed now we're going to choose what do we want to reference that to so under select the layer here i'm just going to reference it to the background and you'll see it does a really nice job of blending those colors in better with the background. The tones match better, the muted colors match better. Um, it's a little bit less saturated, especially in the blues and some of the browns inside of here. And you do have all of your settings over here, strength, which is almost like opacity, and some color adjustments if you need to make some adjustments when you're done. You come over here, you just click on new layer, click OK, and it'll output that object that it just worked on to a new layer so you can hide the one that's below it. In fact, I would just go delete the one that was below it, but we still have our original here with the mask on it in case we ever need to get back to that. Now, a lot of people you do this in composites. If you're compositing something, you can see his skin is very, very, it's got a lot of almost red and pink tones to the skin. And we would jump through hoops. We would do desaturated layers and duplicates and work with blend modes and all these different things back in the day. This is, this is an example from my compositing book from 10 years ago, if you can believe it's been that long. But one of the things we can now do is use that same uh, harmonization filter on something like this to help him blend into the background. So same as before, Commander Control J, make a copy, hide the original. Go to the copy layer, right click on the layer mask and choose apply. Now he's on transparency and then we just go filter, go down to neural filters, do the same thing that we did. We'll turn harmonization on. He's the layer we wanna fix. We go to select the layer and choose the background down here as the layer that we want to reference this to. And you'll see on the before and after, that's before and that's after. It does a nice job of desaturating and muting some of the colors a little bit. And then this is one of those times where maybe I'll increase the strength. Maybe I can remove some saturation even more from this one. Okay, and work with any of these color adjustments to help this blend in even better. And don't forget, you still, when I click OK and I put this onto a new layer, I still have a layer of which I, now I can go and do more things to. So if I needed to do something very selective to it with an adjustment layer or a layer mask or something along those lines, I still have a layer here that I could do those things on. Okay, moving on to another neural filter. We're gonna open up a landscape photo. We'll head up to the filter menu, back down here to neural filters, and there's one for landscapes. Uh, I don't know exactly how much I'm gonna use it. It's, it's interesting. I'm, I'm interested to see where something like this will go. But the way it works is you open up a photo and then you've got all of these different presets up at the top here. You can even go to custom and upload your own photos to be a preset. So I'm gonna do out outlandish. I'm going to click on the winter one just because it actually does a huge change to the photo. I don't know that it's a good change, but it does a very, very big change to the photo. And we have now turned 
our winter scene or our fall scene into a winter scene. So uh, there are adjustments to change the strength and everything below. And I I'm interested to see, I don't know that, you know, again, hey, if you wanna do it, go right ahead. I don't care. It's just, I don't know how much I'll use something like that. Now, what I do see some possibilities for is really experimenting with some of these to get something that looks decent, outputting it to a new layer, and then when I'm done, because I'll have a new layer, to somehow blend the two in between. Maybe not put a winter scene and a fall scene, but maybe work the colors if the colors weren't as good as you wanted when you took the photo. Uh, there might be some options there uh, that can definitely help out inside of your landscape photo. So I think something a little bit not quite going fall to winter, but something in the middle and lower opacities and masking, I think there could definitely be some uses for that. Okay, so let's switch gears into Adobe Camera Raw. I can open up a raw photo or just go filter, camera raw filter, and it's gonna bring me to the same place. Um, I'm doing this in Camera Raw, and I'm, I'm only gonna show you a couple of quick examples. There's a little pop-up card that'll pop up in the top right, and you, know, you can click the link in the description, I'll put it there. I've got a Lightroom Classic video that dives a lot further into this. It's like 20 minutes long, but it is an all-encompassing tutorial. So you might wanna go watch that, because uh, I'm just gonna cover it from a pretty high level here. And Lightroom Classic and Camera Raw are the same. So what you learn in Classic uh, and Lightroom, you can use right here inside of Camera Raw. So what we're gonna do, we now have a little masks option instead of the tools. We used to have the brush and gradient tools. Now they show up once you click on masks. You could still use them like you always did, but now we have select subject. So it's taking the AI selection tools that we had in Photoshop and it's bringing them over to Lightroom and then we can go in here and work on all those different areas as soon as it selects it. So it automatically selects the subjects and we can go and make changes once it does that. You also will see there's a new mask panel up here and we can add and subtract from this select subject. So for example, I can subtract from it with let's say the brush tool. And what I would do is probably, it looks a little glowy around the edges. So I would just take a larger brush and just brush around some of those areas there. Hover over the mask and the mask tool, you'll see that you show, it shows you a red overlay so you know the areas that were selected and it shows you all the little sub layers and things that created that in the first place. Now I'm gonna cancel out of there. Let's go look at one more example. And this one we'll take into the camera raw filter as well. Now this time I'm gonna to go to my mask tool and use select sky. So this is automatically gonna put a selection around the sky of which I can go and I can make any changes where I'll bring the exposure and maybe the highlights down a little bit, okay? Here's where it gets cool because having a selection for the subject or the sky is great. And I would have been happy there, but I would have felt like something was missing. So watch what I can do. We have our masks panel over here. You can see there's my mask from my sky. I'm gonna hit new mask. I'm gonna select the sky again which is gonna give me yet another mask layer. So they're stacked on top of each other. Now I'm gonna to go to that sky selection, click on those three little dots and choose invert. Invert takes this to a whole new level. Invert makes it, takes a really useful feature and it makes it incredibly useful. So now I've got everything but the sky selected. And in this case, I can go and make some quick changes to it. I've got some presets in my brush and gradient masking deep dive. Uh, one of those is sunshine. I love it for fall colors. So I'll probably dial back the exposure a little bit there, but that does a nice job. And then just like I did before, I can add or subtract from any of those masks using those two buttons there at the top. As I mentioned earlier, I have a longer tutorial right here for free uh, where it dives deeper into the masking technology. It's in Lightroom Classic, but Lightroom Classic and Adobe Camera Raw, the develop module in Lightroom, I should say, is the same thing. So once you learn how to do it in one, you'll know how to do it in the other one. And if you wanna definitely, you'll look at some more of these selection tools and really understand this new masking panel, uh, that video would be a great place to go next.